Hey folks, welcome. My name's Andrew, this is what I do, and in today's episode, we're gonna be investigating one of the more curiously named jobs out there, Scrum Masters. And before any of the butts get excited out there, it has nothing to do with rugby. There is a whole world of jobs out there, most of which we've never heard of. Let's explore that world together. Today, we're joined by someone very special who's traveled very far to be with us today my wife. Rain. Rain, thank you for joining me. Hello. <laughs> Hello. First things first, what the hell is a scrum master? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> A Scrum Master essentially is the person who uh, wants to create um, high-performing teams, mm. highly effective teams, highly efficient teams. So most commonly, a Scrum Master will be found on like a software development team. Mm. Um, and basically, then uh, they are there to help that team um, coordinate um, themselves. What does a Scrum Master do to make those teams high-performing? A lot of tea time. <laughs> um, tea time? <laughs> tea time. Love tea. No. Um, so tea time, um, you need to spend a lot of time um, coaching a team or an organization. So you're going to sit a lot with people, try and help them figure out what are their struggles, try and strategize how to overcome those struggles. Um, and those struggles can range anything between um, they've got a development problem that they don't know how mm. to solve, um, something crashed, and we need to find someone who can help us get the environment back up and running. Mm. Or it could be something like the tool that they're using to help organize their work, like a little task list, is not um, operational, and then you they to kind of help them figure out their tool. So it, yeah. it can range from super easy to super complicated. Right, right, right. So you're not actually doing any of the development or technical no. work? I don't actually work. Would you like to earn some money? No, I wouldn't. I would like other people to earn it and then give it to me. <laughs> I'm not actually doing any of the um, building um, or selling of the product, but I'm there to um, kind of assist. So a Scrum Master will basically work with both sides of the business, so the team that is building and the team that is selling, and you're helping them kind of um, become one team. So um, how the Scrum Manual likes to describe it is that Scrum Master would be the German Shepherd, and the development team will be the the, the sheep and then the stakeholders will be the wolves and <laughs> the German Shepherd is actually there to kind of like protect the sheep from the wolves mm. um, so I thought it was quite cute but in reality it's not actually like that in reality you're trying to get the wolves and the sheep to actually integrate and become one team right. and work together so, so the, the wolves are not really evil <laughs> they're not no, no, okay. no. <laughs> um, yeah and the scrum master needs to kind of um you know, assist both teams. So you need to help the, the stakeholders um, figure out what features they're wanting to build and you mm. um, there to kind of then get them to collaborate with the development team and the development team, um, you need to help them kind of strategize how to best go about, you know, releasing a product. Right, so, so you're helping the stakeholders to kind of organize their thoughts to tell the developers what to do and more clearly, yes. so the developers have a clear idea, but then at the same time, those developers are a little bit sort of scattered like sheep, and you need to help coordinate them so that they can actually work effectively together to make the product that the stakeholders want. Exactly. Cool, all right, okay, awesome. So what would you say that you love the most about this job? Demo day. Demo day. Every second uh, week, you would um, then get the team to kind of demonstrate whatever is whatever it is that they had built over the last two weeks. So then, um, it's it's a really nice way to see um, kind of all their hard work, um, everything that they've you know slogged for. <laughs> Actually, um, you can see it visibly and and come to light. And then that's when everybody's invited, so anyone can kind of come and check out the new thing that they built. Right. Um, and you have a big celebration. <laughs> And it's very nice um, for, for the team to experience those wins. Um, and then as a Scrum Master, if you're seeing them kind of um, succeeding and everyone's super excited and we're releasing stuff into the market and everyone loves it, then that's a really good day. Awesome. Awesome. All right, cool. So on, on the complete opposite side of that, what do you what do you hate the most about this job? Hmm. I would say that um, understand the wolves. The wolves. <laughs> I love the wolves. The wolves are the best. <laughs> um, uh, it's more that 
organizations or people don't really understand the role. It's not um, a very common role. It's not a very well understood role. Mm. You Com don't say. <laughs> yeah, like companies or teams or um, people think they've, they've heard the terms yeah. and then they get excited about it. So they want to kind of implement it. And then as soon as you actually start implementing it, they get a fright mm. because it's not what they expected or thought it would be. Um, and obviously, uh, a massive change in thinking completely differently or working in a completely different way is quite scary. So it's right, so, so, so you're running into a lot of sort of resistance to change at, exactly. at, in the organization. Yes. Okay, all right. So what sort of person do you think would be really excellent or just really love being a scrum okay. master? Uh, someone who is a master communicator. Um, I would say how, how come? Why, why do they need to be so good at communication? Because <laughs> uh, you kind of need to listen out for what is everyone saying? Are they on the same page? Are they and, and this is between the stakeholders and the developers? Or Every, yeah, so anyone that's working together. So you'll see um, either the stakeholders, um, you know, either they need to get on the same page in terms of what it is that they want. Mm. Um, they need to explain that to the team. And then how that gets translated to the, the developers can be quite tricky. That's why you need me. I am your bridge. Ich bin ein nerd. Um, and then the developers, obviously, they all need to um, Understand make sure. each other. Yes. Yeah. And you don't want the developers either all working on the same thing or um, forget to work on something. So they kind of need to call coordinate themselves so they need to collaborate um within the two different disciplines and across the two mm. different disciplines effectively and you're there to kind of listen out so if you if you hear that maybe they're not kind of saying the same thing you kind of need to like know how to ask the right question so that they can kind of discover for themselves mm. <laughs> if they're actually on the right track and then they need to kind of like shuffle back um or I've had it the other way around as well, where actually everyone is saying the same thing, but they don't think that they are. Yeah. <laughs> and same thing, you kind of need to know how to prompt. Um, yes. So you need to listen out right. for, is there any miscommunications? And then you need to know how to prompt them in the right direction so that they can get on the same page. Okay, cool. So what would you say, or who would you say would be a bad fit for this role? Mm, a control freak. Um, so, Why? <laughs> um, so if you are someone who really wants to um, like dictate, like tell the team what to do, mm. um, in this particular instance, that's not going to work because yeah. um, everyone who's in their position yeah. actually knows more. Yeah. So you can't have um, a business analyst, although they might be higher up, telling a developer how to do code. Right. Just trust the team that yes. they are going to be the best person to implement something and right. allow them to, to implement the best solution that they can come up with because you're right. not actually the best um, strategist in this particular scenario. Right, right. How did you get into Scrum Mastery? Mm, so I actually started out um, in Pilates as my career. <laughs> Is that where you learn to be flexible? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So we had all my agility training. <laughs> um, and I actually just really wanted to get into the tech field. Mm. Um, and I didn't want to be a developer necessarily, but I wanted to be part of the development team. Mm. Um, so I started doing a few short courses, um, anything relevant to kind of that environment. Um, and then one of my Pilates um, clients um, ended up starting his own tech company and so I um, got invited to, to start there um, so started there then did um, my scrum master certification um, and that kind of opened up the doors for um, moving into other companies okay awesome so so do you do you need any qualifications to do this job so theoretically, you don't need anything. You don't need qualifications or experience. You just got to be the right sort of person. You just have to have the right um, personality yeah. or be the right person for it. But I would say that um, it's better to go and get either a Scrum Master certification or um, get really jacked up in some sort of... Um, <laughs> um, or really understand kind of the development world. Yeah. Um, so you... To have any foundation course in, in 
that <laughs> does help. So, so you need to have a bit of the context of IT. You need the context yeah. of IT. What does IT stand for? What doesn't it stand for? Um, for two reasons. So one is um, if you're trying to convince a company um, to hire you, then um, it's going to be really difficult to say, just trust that I'm the right person. So you kind yeah. of want to show that you've done X, Y, and Z so that maybe give me a chance. Yeah. And then the second reason is um, you're going to really struggle with the communication part if you have zero context mm. um, of, of their environment um, or their lingo. Right. Then um, if you're already in a company, it's a little bit easier because then you can actually start learning about Agile and just implementing it in the team that you're already in. Yeah. And then from there, you can kind of then motivate that you're a scrum master. But right. if you're coming from like my situation where you're not in the environment at all, you're a Pilates instructor, then I would say go and get something to help um, you get in the door. Right, right. Awesome. Thank you very much. I think that's, that's a nice clear road for folks who might want to jump into this. Uh, so thank you so much for, for traveling so far from from the bedroom through to the couch to join me here today. <laughs> it's been a pleasure having you with you, having you with me, having me with you. It's been, thank you. It's been great. It's been great. <laughs> So that was the curiously named Scrum Master. As you can see, very little to do with running around with boys in small tights. It's more large men and corduroys. So perhaps you feel that you have the interpersonal skills to navigate between the business world and the development world. Or perhaps you prefer something a little bit more technical. What careers are you interested in? Perhaps you have a career that you would like us to delve into, or maybe a unique one that you would like to share. Let us know in the comments down below. And if you would like to stay up to date with what careers are out there, don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers.